Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Appreciate Kingdom Hearts, the series at large. It's not a formal Let's Play, because the Kingdom Hearts games have notoriously slow beginnings, but we're going to appreciate a few things about the game and this is something I've talked about doing, so it'll be sort of my greatest hits of, it's the highlight reel of Kingdom Hearts, a couple of the games anyway. And the very first thing we're going to just sit back and enjoy is this song, which is called Dearly Beloved, and if you're ever wondering how do you do a title screen, the answer is this. You just welcome the player into your game gently. All right, moving on. One thing I didn't properly appreciate the first couple times I played a Kingdom Hearts game, or for the first decade, I've only recently kind of become a fan. I liked a couple games, but now I think, like, I'm on board. Um, they have really psychedelic, visually metaphoric, prophetic opening sequences to J-pop songs. And at first... At first I wasn't sure what I thought about them, they were just kind of weird. It's a weird series. But, some cool stuff happens. So we're gonna cut to a different game real quick, and they actually introduce things really quickly and effectively. You can see these three people are friends, they've got the five-pointed stars, which is a recurring symbol in the series. Something comes between them, something goes wrong, they have to fight. Like, this is summarizing events of an entire game. And some of it's visual metaphor, and some of it's literal, and hey, they sorted things out, everything's all fine and good. They're in a state of happiness together. And then it's all ruined by that guy. And we see at the very end of the gist of what happens, where they're all falling into darkness, and she is doing something to sacrifice herself to save her friends. Pretty good. That's a quick recap of a 20-hour game. All right. Most Kingdom Hearts games have kind of weird beginnings, but Kingdom Hearts 1 takes the cake, and I friggin' love it. And it's a Final Fantasy Disney crossover, okay? It's gonna get weird, it's a bizarre combination, but... Shockingly, they made some really good games. And it kind of... like, the premise is so bizarre, it freed them up to do some really crazy stuff. Like, beginning the game... with a super opaque, abstract, like, journey through a subconscious. You have no idea what people actually mean. I mean, step forward. That one's obvious. But I just like that they begin the game with, like, A, some really beautiful art kind of all around you, and... I mean, mostly under you, but it's kind of all around. And we pick something. If you want to have, like, the best possible uh, stats, by the way, pick, pick the wand. But everyone just picks this. Yeah, sure, we're going to go with it. Now, what do we give up? Y'all know how I run. Kindness to aid friends. <laughs> uh, we know what I'm about. You chose destruction and sacrificing the ability to help others. Yes. You see a lot of people literally and figuratively falling in Kingdom Hearts games. Better get used to that one. Yoko Shimomura did the soundtrack. You might be familiar with her work from Street Fighter 2, Final Fantasy 15, Super Mario RPG, and all Kingdom Hearts games. After Nobuo Uematsu, she's the best composer in the world. Well, for video games. Although, 
Don't know if they're honestly getting that tough competition from other areas. All right, these guys are shadows. This is the next exciting thing I'm gonna show you. You can see Sora, eh. Well, you watch how he attacks. He's kind of got like this doofy quality to him because he's young in this game. I think I picked proud mode, so it's good to know that we can uh, drop a shadow in one combo. The, cam er, the camera is a little tight in Kingdom Hearts 1. You do get used to it, but eh, they should have figured that out. They corrected it later, though. And through. I played Kingdom Hearts 1 for the first time. I mean, I'd heard things about it for years. Well, three of them. Uh, because I played it for the first time the day Kingdom Hearts 2 came out. I was finally, like, because it got a ton of hype, and so I was finally like, all right, I'll play a game in the series, but I should probably start at the beginning. So, interesting touch number two. So Sora later on will become more confident. He'll be less doofy in how he moves around. But he just knocks on a treasure chest to open it. It's an interesting thing. All right, we've warped to Kingdom Hearts 2 now. Sora's a little bit older, a little bit more confident. You can see little tiny differences in his body language, making him look a little bit more slick. You can do the backflip in the other one. But anyway, there's lots of different worlds from lots of different movies, and much to my joy, Tron made the cut. And not this fancy new one, although they've done Tron Legacy. Original Tron. So, I mean, heartless in uh, Tron world. In the grid. What else could you like? Master Why control program. So in the very first Kingdom Hearts game, Sora kind of... Yeah, he's like a little, a little putsy, a little clumsy. Looks the wrong size for his body and that sort of thing. In this one, our boy Sora does pretty well for himself. Pop into Tron version of Master Form. You can fight with two Keyblades now and hover in the air a very long time. And you can see pretty respectable damage for himself as well. So I wanted to show some of those other areas because a big part of enjoying the game is enjoying the art and everything. And like they completely redid the command menu on the left and Sora's outfit to match the Tron world. Um, and, you know, themed enemies and so on. That's not unusual. But what is wonderful is what's just around the corner. Don't worry about the plot. We went all the way back. There's the cornerstone of light. They redid the audio through a terrible filter. Because we're in the 1930s? Everything's black and white. Really? Have you been here before? Uh oh, it's Pete. Hey you! Seen any bad guys around here? And they made it kind of hokey. Why you ought to? They redid the models for all the characters. Got some familiar faces you might not have seen in a while. And by the way, I've seen in a while. Remember how our young boy Sora opened a treasure chest by knocking on it and he kind of moved around awkwardly? Didn't seem quite as formidable and dexterous. Our boy's growing up. Little bits like that. I mean, you do all the little things and they start, you know, delivering character. All right, that takes us here. Got some retro Disney cartoons to perceive. Or be part of, even. Do you want to meet the old Mickey Mouse? Oh, there he is. Uh oh. Just little touches. He makes sound effects every time he moves. 
Really likes shaking hands. So we wipe out the Heartless and... Oh, see you later, buddy. All right, everybody, we're gonna wrap up just showing Sora in his normal element because the game really does have quite good gameplay. And we'll worry about this little area later. I don't want to get too much into plot details, but I mentioned there's a Final Fantasy crossover. Do you, do you want to imagine what it would be like to rumble with Cloud and Squall? Tifu and Yuffie not in a turn-based battle system. This is one of my favorite parts in the game. Like, it, it goes in phases with an extremely slow beginning. Which I'll probably do an episode on appreciating it later, because it has some cool stuff in it, but... That doesn't speed up the pace at all. These enemies can be kind of frustrating. So, when I would play Final Fantasy VII and all those games back in the day, this is Reaction Command, they're pretty fun. Depending on the enemies you fight, you can do different things with them. Watch Yuffie do her thing. I would play all the old Final Fantasy games, and I kind of enjoyed the gameplay of the battle system, but, you know, in my head I always imagined, you know, what it would be like. And, you know, I like them the way they are, but... Getting the opportunity to actually do this with a bunch of characters is pretty awesome. Wanna know what the Squall fight's like? We get to see. Going all Lionheart with his gunblade right now. Let's try to let's see what he's doing over here. As he just cuts through them. And uh, later on you can do an arena sort of thing and fight them one at a time if you'd like or all at once at the highest level. is you versus Squall, Cloud, Tifa, or he's called Leon in this one, Squall is. Uh, Cloud, Tifa, and uh, Yuffie. So one on four. And it's cool they go in order of badassness. You can watch Tifu just rock them off. There we go. And you can even spot some of her attacks from uh, Final Fantasy VII. Some of her limit breaks make the flow of all the attacks she can do. And of course, I mean, you gotta finish on a high note, don't you? Gotta help our boy Cloud. Also, how did he get in Smash Bros? In Kingdom Hearts 1, I think you could fight him in an arena as well, but uh, this is, of course, much better. Let's watch him do his thing. I think I've spotted him doing Braver there. Like, right now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's three minutes, but I mean, what a delight. You can only do it once, as well. And then we fight a thousand Heartless. 